recently came across this action figure of Mork from the old sitcom Mork and Mindy. It's from 1979, which I guess was the height of Mork mania. For a brief window, he was more popular than the Fonz. I'm the Fonz, huh? He came with a flying egg. It was made by Mattel, and like their Battlestar Galactica figures, they didn't paint any eyes. I hate figures like this, with their soulless, flesh-covered eye sockets. Fucking things give me the creeps. Mork doll with talking space pack. Finding the figure reminded me of one of the worst episodes of Mork and Mindy, from season two, titled The Night They Raided Mind Skis, which I guess is supposed to be a joke on The Night They Raided Minskis, a 1968 Elliot Gould movie about a burlesque house. Maybe 30 years ago, that reference seemed more current. All sitcoms of this period love tackling hard-hitting issues, like the episode of Different Strokes, where Arnold's friend gets raped. Or the episode of Happy Days, where Joni is almost raped. Or the episode of All in the Family, where Edith is almost raped. Jeez, what's with all these rape episodes? I thought people watch sitcoms to have a good time and laugh, not witness the degradation and violation of vulnerable people. An orc egg, and Mindy doll too. The night they raided mine skis confronts bigotry in America. I have no doubt the makers wrote this episode with noble intentions, but they failed dreadfully at getting the tone right. The episode starts with Mork helping some bozo who's running for office. Oh, that guy's Jay Thomas, by the way, who died last week while I was working on this video. Anyway, Mork's buddy needs votes, so Mork tries to get him supporters. Turns out, the people Mork has befriended are a group of white supremacists. Oops. Exactly how would you like me to help you clean up Boulder? Well, first, I think we ought to start with the Spinx. <laughs> then I think we gotta go after the nip scooks and bagel bread. <laughs> oh, then we can smear the Krauts, Pollocks, Beaners, and Jungle Bunnies. <laughs> Mindy isn't down with these neo-Nazis and kicks them out. Yeah, that showed them. Mork, however, decides he'd rather hang out with his new friends than Mindy. Well, I'm out. I'll pick you up a Polish six-pack. Four beers. <laughs> That's got to be real depressing for her, to realize she's less fun than a pack of white supremacists. This turns Mork into a bit of an asshole, who can't wait to tell Mindy all the hot jokes he's learned. Oh, what about the Polish man who locked his keys in his car? It took him two weeks to get his family out. <laughs> You know what's wrong with Ireland geographically? It's above sea level. <laughs> you know how to save a darkie from drowning? No, Mark. Good. <laughs> Mark, shut up! What's wrong, man? I mean, my friends laugh at these. Do you see anyone here laughing? Well, maybe nobody in the scene, but the studio audience was laughing their ass off at those jokes. You know what my friends say about Italians eating Chinese food? They use wop sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy gets all sanctimonious. Oh, men are just telling jokes. Mark, they use those jokes as weapons until they have enough guts to buy bullets. But it's hard to take her point seriously when these jokes have gotten the biggest laughs in the history of the show. Mindy comes back to find her house trashed, including her being hanged in effigy. <laughs> Based on the first half of the episode, I bet when they shot this, the studio audience busted a gut laughing at the go-home Pollock dummy, and the filmmakers later had to dub over the disapproving noises. Mork exacts revenge by trashing the white supremacist headquarters. The studio audience goes wild cheering. But I think it has less to do with them desiring justice than it does with them simply enjoying wanton destruction. Like, if they'd actually been shown the trashing of Mindy's apartment, they would have cheered just as loud. When the white supremacists show back up, Mork works some magic on them, turning the leader black and the rest of them blue and red, like they've painted their faces for a football game. I like how in an episode that was supposed to be anti-ethnic joke, they can't resist throwing a quick oriental riff onto the soundtrack when one of the women is revealed to be Asian. Jeez, I'm surprised they didn't add a gong sound effect, too. What's happening, hot stuff? Shenanigans. It's been a lot of fun, shenanigans. But now we've got to run 